my name's Annette and I'm the Artistic Director of the British Theatre. Sending you virtual hugs and lots of love and light and Yorkshire tea during this crazy, devastating, weird, unprecedented time. Um, and before we jump into any writing tips, I just wanted to take a second to say I hope you're all being kind to yourselves. Um, it's okay right now if you haven't written that full-blown play that you planned to write during lockdown. It's okay if you uh, haven't done all the reading you wanted to do. It's okay if all you're doing is watching RuPaul's Drag Race and eating loads of crisps. I do that every Saturday. Like it's whatever you're doing and however you're coping, it's okay. And these videos exist to, to give you some tips when you're ready for those tips. That can be in a year's time from now. They're going to exist forever. Come back to this video whenever is good for you. Okay? So I just wanted to say that. Um, but with that, shall we get started? So today we're going to talk about the difference between theme and story and how sometimes they can get confused for each other and what to do when you're thinking about either. But before I do anything, I always need a cup of tea. So why don't you make yourself one, strap in, and then let's go for this ride! Cup of tea. Mm -hmm. So we read a lot of plays at the bush and we talk to a lot of writers. And I'd always start with the question so what is the story what is the story that you're planning to write and we can get loads of answers from I want to write a play about sexuality I want to write a play about sexism I want to write a play about childhood I want to write a play about a young woman who's exploring her sexuality and I'll say those are all amazing themes but what's the story you see the difference there because everything I've just said there is a theme what is the story of that young woman that's exploring her sexuality? What is the story of those siblings that you're using to explore childhood? What is the vehicle that is going to help us explore those themes? And that's your story. What are the series of events that happen and in what order? Which then means you'll be able to unpack your theme. And that's the difference. And the end of this video. Goodbye. Joking. <laughs> There's so much more to say, but that, I hope that's that, that's kind of that, I hope that's clear. Um, your theme is your thing. So, sexuality. You're gonna you're gonna explore sexuality, and your story is the series of events that are actually happening, and in what order, and through that you'll explore sexuality. I hope that makes sense, and we'll we'll dive into that even more. Um, and not everybody starts with a theme, and not everybody starts with a story. There's not one right way or wrong way, everybody's different, you know. Uh, you might have a character in your head. How you start your play is unique to you. But for the benefit of this video, and to try and keep it as simple as possible, because I've only got five minutes or so, uh, let's talk about what you can do, and the exercises, and the questions you can ask yourself if you have your theme. So, let's decide that I want to write a play about sexism. That's what I've got. I want to really feel passionate about that topic and I want to write a play about sexism. What I have two questions that I would then ask myself. The first one is actually, what is the question? <laughs> so what is it that you want to say about sexuality? Sex uh, sorry, sexism. Sexism is a huge, huge topic. Huge topic. What is it that I want to say? And I, I would then ask you to ask yourself and make that into a question. What is the question or the interrogation that you have around that topic? Because then that becomes active. So if I'm going to stick with sexism, maybe I want to, uh, my question is, I want to look at workplace sexism and what the differences are between men and women in the workplace. That's my question. And you can be even more specific than that, but I really want you to dig deep and keep it active. And your play then might unpack that. Your play might answer that question, but it gives you somewhere to go. Your play might not. That might also be the point of it. But if it's a question, then it's active and it's going to keep moving. The second thing that I'd ask yourself, I'd ask you to ask yourself is, why is it a play? Why is it a play? Why does it need to be explored through storytelling? Why does it need to be explored theatrically and on stage? Why is it not a speech? Why is it not... A piece of academic work? Why is it not an article? Why is it that you want to use the medium of a play to tell this story? And you may not have the answer to that yet, but it's something really interesting to keep in the back of your head while you're writing. Because if I can turn to you and I can say, this reads like a piece of uh, literature, 
interesting that you've chosen a play, right? And if you have an answer for that, then that's really exciting. And it's something just to think about when you are on this journey. Outfit change! Woo woo! Best film of all time, Mr. Hercules. Um, so let's give let's go back to what we were talking about before. And let me give you an example of an actual play that, that I can show you the difference between the themes and the stories. And the play that we're going to talk a little bit about is Lynn Nottage's Sweat. Wonder why she's chosen that. But um, no, uh, to be honest, I really genuinely think that Sweat is one of the best pieces of writing I've read in the last 10 years. It's such a beautiful masterclass in playwriting. So if you haven't read it, uh, I would really recommend it. It's a beautiful, beautiful piece of work. Um, but Sweat, you know, if I ask you now, those that have seen it or read it, what is Sweat about? You know, what are the themes of Sweat? It covers so many things. It's about friendship. It's about race relations. It's about class. It's about the deindustrialization of America. I can, I'm sure you can name even more. So what's the story? <laughs> Let's boil that down to a sentence, the story of sweat. Well, the story follows a friendship group in a bar. If we want to be even more specific, we could say the friendship of two women and uh, the consequences of what happens to each of them when they are locked out of their factory uh, is, the, is, the, is the story of sweat, isn't it? It's about those people in that bar and the thing that happens, the event that happens is that this, they are locked out of that factory, okay? Now, I spoke about the series of events and the order in which they happen. So let's boil this down even further into a thing that I like to call story beats or beats of action. So let's let's actually boil the story down as I've just taken that sentence. Let's make it more specific and boil the story of sweat down into five or six bullet points. So lifelong friends who work in the local factory get together to celebrate their birthdays. Friend A gets promoted. They get locked out of the factory. The friends blame friend A. Their relationships broke down as they lose money and trust in each other. And this results in a big fight in the bar. Those are six bullet points. Those are six uh, series of events that happen. And we could, we could, there's more, there's a lot more. There's, it's an ensemble play, there's loads of characters. But if we wanted to boil it down to these are the things that happen that lead to the fight. Um, and I've not put any politics in there. I've not put any race relation stuff in there. I'm just talking about literally what is happening. What do we see happening? And there's six points there. Um, Sweat is described as a deeply, deeply political play. When, but when we talk about the story, there isn't really a mention of politics. It's a personal story about these people in this bar and deals with the tensions of race and class by us physically following what has happened to them beat by beat. This is, uh, this is an example of the micro addressing the macro because when I talk about sweat with people, they're, they talk about the politics because through these beats of action, Lynn is exploring politics, but we are seeing specific moments. And I think it's just really interesting for you all to think about that with your plays. If we took away the themes, completely took away the theme. So that play that you're writing about sexism or that play that you're writing about childhood, take that away for a second and just focus on the beats of action. What is happening? And I would encourage you as an exercise to see if you can boil that down to maybe five or six bullet points. Literally, what is happening that means that you can see the story of your play? Shakespeare because uh, that's a story that quite a few people are familiar with and I'm going to boil down the story of Romeo and Juliet into a couple of bullet points um, and not mention theme at all um, and uh, what I normally would do if we were together is I would put them up on the wall um, on post-it notes um, so you can see them laid out but I'm not very good with technology and I've tried to film this already doing that and I messed it up so I'm gonna show you one at a time or maybe in post-production we can add it using title cards we'll see so <laughs> I'm gonna fold down this story so let's start so the uh there's a vendetta between two families which is sort of like the, the thing that, that sets it up there's a vendetta between two families uh Romeo and Juliet meet and fall in love at a party that has been gate crashed. They marry. There is a street fight and Mercutio is killed. Romeo, in revenge, then kills Juliet's cousin. He is banished. 
Juliet fakes her death in order to, to get him to come. And then Romeo doesn't get the message in time, so he kills himself. She then kills herself. And then the last post-it note that I haven't written is that their deaths sort of end the, end the feud. 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 <laughs> I can't say that word. Um, so that is Romeo and Juliet bowled down into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine post-it notes. The whole epic story of Romeo and Juliet and I haven't mentioned any themes there. That is literally the action, the beats of action that happen and as I said if we work together I put them up on the wall um, so you can look at them across the room and literally just see those moments of action and this is why it's such an interesting exercise for you to try at home. I feel like I'm on Blue Peter. done them in the right order so for example here with Romeo and Juliet what would happen if we swapped round a uh, street fight and Mercutio is killed with uh, Romeo kills Juliet's cousin what, ha what happens if those happen in a different order and this is why uh, post-it notes are really good to do that because you can do it quite quickly and it's quite fun um, you know and those that know the story know that Romeo kills um, Tybalt Juliet's cousin in revenge you could say for uh, Mercutio's death but if you swap those around, that completely changes the characters, it completely changes the objectives, and you might go, oh, that's interesting. That might make more sense, actually. What happens if that happens this way? And that's why the sequence of events is really important. The order in which they happen that I mentioned at the beginning of this video is as much part of this conversation around the story as the action events. The order in which they happen has such an impact on your story. do things they just tell us things so again coming back to that original question I did at the beginning of the video what um it makes this a play and not a speech or an essay is that things are happening we're seeing action theatricality is action so let me see things these characters are doing things events are taking place and you're not just telling us about them and that's really really key and something that uh, I think is really important and I actually want to take this second to shout out team Angelica um specifically Ricky Beadle Blair and uh, John Russell Gordon because I learned all of this from them you know it's um it's very easy to get a theme and story uh, confused and think you've got one and not the other and not really sure what each one is and they really helped me understand it and and actually all of their geniuses in this video so big yourselves up Ricky and John and um, if you ain't checked out their work you should they're wonderful playwrights and incredible inspirations to a lot of writers um yeah and I hope uh, you found something useful in this video um and uh yeah wishing you lots of love and luck and all of that in your writing and we'll see you back at the bush very soon hopefully Big love.